أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على نور الأنور الأرسل الأصر وتغيق الأيار المفتح الباب اليسر سيدنا محمد المختار وآله الأطهار وصحبه الأخيار عدد النعم الله الأكبر أما بعد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Today we're going to uh, I've been asked to talk something about Professor Latas The one that I consider as the most uh, important Great person of our century Because we're going to talk somebody Who is already at the level of Ahl Tamkin the one who have all kind of goodness, very certain when he talk about something, and then we come, we come to to know that about his knowledge is no doubt at all, and he is a person that uh, he never exaggerate on something, and he is not a sort of self deception. So everything he when he wrote his work, and any of his work. Uh, reflect his sincerity and his integrity in knowledge. So that's why it is quite difficult to talk about him and to talk comprehensively about all of his work. But we try the best in order to see something that we can uh, understand and something that you can benefit out of his work. And then by, by looking at him, he is a person of sound reason and sound judgment. So now I think it is quite difficult even to find professors in university that have a sound reason and sound judgment. <laughs> so uh, luckily we have one in, in Malaysia, not in any other country. In Malaysia we have one which have a very sound reason and sound judgment. And, and another thing about him is that he have the power to articulate the true meaning and that is uh, very important for us because we need that kind of person to guide us to articulate something for us so that uh, we can we come to know about the true meaning of everything the true meaning about ourselves the true meaning about god the true meaning about this whole world the true meaning about education the true meaning about happiness the true meaning about justice the true meaning also about freedom so all of that need to be articulated properly. And fortunately, we, we have this person, Syed Professor Syed Muhammad Nakhil al Atas. Okay? And he is also having a high ability to distinguish something, uh, distinguish something right from any kinds of wrong perception. So he can guide us not to be succumbed to any kind of wrong perception or the battle kind of opinion. So that's why we are quite lucky because in nature we have this kind of person. But unfortunately, our people not giving so much acknowledgement to him. So we have to start to acknowledge him, to put him in a proper place because his integrity in knowledge leads us to the right pattern of thinking. And then we can see that uh, uh, his understanding about something uh, it is not just based on rational and demonstrative proof, but also based on his experience that we can say that his, that kind of experience is the, the intuitive kind of experience. Uh, so that is a kind of experience that he attained. So he is not just using his. Uh, rational power or just not using the demonstrative proof in order to support his argument but most of the time it is based on inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so inspiration is something like a secret communication secret communication of God to a people like him the awliya okay? so we have to have that kind of person in order for us to possible to have a right pattern of life. So without his idea, without his articulation, we cannot be guided properly and we cannot attain the right pattern of life. So of course, uh, by looking at his work, 
in order to read his work. In order to understand his work, it entails the most intense mental activity. Sometimes it brings us towards what we call fatigue, you know, <laughs> because uh, I think it is the most uh, arduous, the most arduous. <laughs> Sometimes uh, we can feel that, that kind of tiredness of fatigue because of trying to understand his work. But uh, we have to, we have to try the best in order to understand his, his work because uh, um, if we looking at his work, his work involves an exploration into all kinds of meanings and proper conception, especially when it relates with a certain fundamental essential terms. So he can see how he articulate the meaning, how he come up uh, with the proper conception of something. Let's say, for example, when he talk about knowledge, he give a very precise, refined kind of meaning and conception regarding the nature of knowledge and also the nature of being. Okay, uh, uh, this morning, I have a discussion with some people at Shah Alam about the nature of being and truth. That is a very difficult discourse, but that discourse based on the, the works of Professor Al Arta. So we can at least benefit something out of his work and we can explain again to, to the people based on our understanding on his work regarding the nature of being, the nature of reality, the nature of truth. All of these kind of uh, terms and concepts are very, very difficult and we have to have this kind of person. So luckily we have uh, Professor Latas in our period, in our time, in order to, uh, to not, he's not just, he's not a kind of person who just analyze. He's not a kind of what we call the analyst. Uh, an analyst. He's not an analyst, he's a real scholar, he's a real thinker, okay? So he, uh, he connect us with so many fundamental things. And then his idea uh, bring uh, a great benefit to all kind of sciences. And what we can see that uh, his work is very significant because he connect everything in the coherent whole. So when he talk about, let's say, the conception or the notion of happiness. He connect the happiness with misery. He connect the happiness with virtue. He connect the happiness with the nature of man. It means that when we want to understand something of his conception and or his exposition, we have to understand so many things, so many essential elements in order to understand only one thing. Let's say, for example, the nature or the meaning of happiness and even I think he's the only one that mentioned that the meaning of happiness or the experience of happiness is not in Arabic that we translate that as tajriba. Because the Arab, the modern Arab, they think that the meaning of happiness, the meaning there is tajriba. But he said, he, he said that that is not tajriba. He even can correct the Arab. <laughs> he said that the Arab is wrong. The, the, the right word for the experience of happiness is Zawq as I think he's the only one who, who, who using that word properly when he talked about happiness. Or at least he, he mentioned to one of the translator, the translator used to be one of the professors at his talk before, around 1990s. He is a professor in Arabic, <laughs> but he still make a mistake. And then uh, when Professor Alatas mentioned to him that it is not Tajriba, it is Zaw, he'll also become confused because now Zaw is being used in a different context. So, so that's why uh, Professor Alatas mentioned to him, if you don't want to use the word Zaw, I have another alternative, Haqiqatul Sa'ada. So, <laughs> so that is the solution. So, so I think the, the, the translated work of that book, The Nature of Happiness, or The Experience of Happiness, is Haqiqatul Sa'ada in Arabic. Uh, not Zawq al Sa'ada. But I think Professor al uh, prefer more the, the word Zawq instead of the Haqiqah. Okay? So this is very interesting uh, by, by, 
uh, looking at his, uh, his understanding, his rational perception, his discursive understanding. So that's why um, what he provides us is a very profound in order to understand especially the fundamental element of the worldview of Islam. Okay? So that's why he always advised me from before when I, start to, I started to study under him from 1992 upwards. He, always advise me to hear something constantly, to read his book constantly, to always repeat reading it, not just one. You have to repeat reading his book. Even when it is just a small book, like the book on religion of Islam as the foundation of ethic and morality. Some people say that it is only the... the they just have read it once, and after that, they think that they already understood. But for Alatas, it is not yet sufficient. You, you have to repeatedly reading it. And, um, and then uh, you have to repeat so many times until his knowledge becomes reality to you. Uh, that must be the case. <laughs> become something like become a part of yourself. His knowledge. Uh, the same also when you read Al Quran, you read a Hadith, you read the, the works of our ulama of the past, the awliya of the past, you have to uh, re repeatedly reading that, try to seek a truth out of that. And we have to, to be patient, uh, to be patient. And the most, the utmost expect that you need to have is to be truthful to yourself to be honest, to be sincere, ikhlas. So without ikhlas, I think you, you better stop. Don't continue reading yet until you have ikhlas, okay? until you have patience. Because sometimes people don't have patience. Let's say when you start to read Prolegomena to the metaphysics of Islam, they think that uh, religion of Islam, the, the first chapter, is a very, very simple thing. So they want to start straight away Reading quiddity and essence, degree of existence, the intuition of existence, something like that. So meaning that they don't know their place. <laughs> they, they don't know the place, okay? And uh, because um, even thousand times, just read even thousand times, because, because, uh, because we can get something, because uh, the work, of our awliya, the works of our awliya like Al Razali, Abdul Rahman Jami, Abdul Karim Jili, Junaid Al Baghdadi, uh, Abdul Rahman Jami, and then um, uh, and then Al Razali, and then uh, Syed Muhammad Naqil Al Atas, uh, Al Khushairi, all of their works. Can even one word from their work is equivalent to a thousand words. Just one phrase of Prophet Salatas, let's say, man is at once body and soul. Just that. It means so many things. It also uh, gives an implication into the context of like ontology, epistemology, cosmology, theology, everything, you know? It is about everything. Just one sentence. Then it denotes everything. It means everything. So that's why uh, uh, one word or one phrase of their work, especially the work of Professor Atas, is equivalent to thousands of words, thousands of wisdom. So just in, enough one saying of him. So that's why when we, we, we have a chance to see him and opportunity to see him, just listen to him. Don't ask all kinds of silly questions to him. Okay, don't start to ask, okay? Because sometimes people, uh, I'll give a chance sometimes to people to come and see him, but, but uh, unfortunately, they don't know how to ask. Uh, let's say one of the Muslim Westerners came to see him, and of course, when he was a Westerner, uh, he was the Western from, from uh, that part of the world, 
So Prophet Al Atas will, will start because Prophet Al Atas will see the context because he is the Western and he is the Muslim. So it is timely and aptly to talk about secularization. Okay, I think about two hours he talked to that person, explained to that person about secularization. But after that, after Professor Al Atas gave him a chance to ask, he asked Professor, do you know Burda? So you can see how unjust they are to a person like Professor Al Atas. Okay? So meaning that they don't know the place. They even don't know what to ask how to ask. They don't, don't, that shows that they don't really appreciate him. Okay? If you really appreciate him, you have to, to start to articulate. Even if you want to ask questions, you have to start to articulate what kind of question that you should ask to him. Okay? Let's say, for example, Professor Alata said that if somebody asks you a simple question, and that question is not really a question, something like hypothetical questions. So don't use or don't try to answer by referring to all kind of great works of our awliya, meaning that we are very insolent to our awliya. Let's say, uh, for example, I always use the example, whether is it okay or not to use like the coconut water for evolution. Don't start to answer that kind of question by referring to this great, great kitab by La Aishaibani, Kitabul Um of Imam Shafi'i. Don't do that. Why? When you do that, you are belittling him, belittling them. The same thing like also Professor Atas, okay? Uh, don't ask him a silly question. Don't ask him sociological question. Let's say how to improve our Muslim society. He will ask, answer back by, why not you, you, you seek the answer from sociologists? Don't ask me about that. I'm talking about the nature of being. I'm talking about the nature of truth, not about the society, not about sociological thing, you know. So you have to know what to ask when it comes to our awliya, when it comes to our great scholar, okay? So when you are looking, at his book, not just looking. <laughs> the word looking is meant for so many things. No? When you are looking at his book, uh, you have your concentration must be on the worldview of Islam. Your concentration must be on the, uh, on the aspect of de-westernization and Islamization. Your concentration must be on, the, on his three problem statements about the confusion of knowledge, about the loss of adab, and about the corrupted or false leadership. Uh, that must be your concentration. And your concentra concentration must be on Islamic civilization. Your concentration must be, uh, about, uh, must, must be on, on the aspect of terminologies that he, he defined to us. Okay, uh, that must be your concentration, okay? Uh, because uh, when, when you concentrate, even one of that elements, even the worldview, Islamization, if you concentrate even one of them, it is already sufficient to fulfill your real true purpose in knowledge, okay? Just one thing, okay? If you don't have sufficient energy, let's say, in order to go through all of his work, just concentrate just on one of his work, like, let's say, Islam, the religion of Islam and the form, just that work. That work alone can help you to fulfill your purpose of life the true purpose of life. That work alone can make you understand why our educational system is, is wrong, okay? And you can understand, just read that small, thin book. You can understand why our people is like this now. Just the book on religion of Islam and the foundation of ethics and morality. So of course, he always mentioned to me that all of his work is based on Al-Quran and prophetic tradition. 
So whatever he is trying to expound to us in his work, everything is based on Al-Quran and prophetic tradition, the Sunnah. And then the best thing about him, if we become close to him, what we can see is that it is very obvious that Allah opens his basirah. And by, by Allah open his basirah, he can come closely to what we call wisdom and ibar. Okay. Ibar means that he can find a lesson through everything that he observed. Yeah, that is ibar. That what we call ibar. Yeah, ibar, ibar. All, he can uh, even find any lesson from anything that he observed. But his observation is not on the mundane things. His observation is on the most fundamental, crucial thing, like education, about ethics and morality, about, uh, about the nature of being, about existence, uh, that kind of observation, about the nature of this whole universe, about the nature of prophecy, about the nature of revelation, uh, that kind of observation. And that observation, when he start to expound that, it is based on clearly and obviously based on Basira. The one who know will know that it is based on Basira. People will ask how to prove that, so we just give him a punch. <laughs> no need to prove about that, you yeah? <laughs> know? He doesn't have to prove, you know? Rasulullah also, uh, when he said about something, we doesn't have to prove what Rasulullah said. We, we doesn't have to prove. Rasulullah SAW also didn't ask the Sahabah to prove what he did say about something. He never asked the Sahabah, please prove to me. <laughs> the Aulia also, they never asked us to prove about what they said. They never ask you. So don't try to, to bring all kind of proof in order, in order to say that they are wrong. Okay? Because actually you are the one who make a big mistake because you don't know the person. Because that's why if you want to say something about a person, you want to criticize him, let's start to look first at yourself. Who you are actually in comparison with Al-Ghazali. Who you are actually in comparison with al -Atas. You have to look first at yourself. Look yourself in the mirror to see how small you are in comparison with those awliya, you know. So that's why you know, after that, you will know the place. But the person who know the place, but still they don't want to admit his place, they are the arrogant one. Takabur. Okay. You have so many people who are so takabur. They, they know the place of the awliya. They know the place of Rasulullah But they still criticize Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. They still criticize uh, Al-Ghazali. They still criticize Jaluddin Rumi. Okay. They still criticize Nuruddin Ar-Raniri. Okay. And they still criticize Syed Muhammad Naqib Al-Atas. Okay. That's what uh, always happened to our awliya, the, the challenge that have been faced by our awliya. So because of uh, the Basira, um, that's why Al-Ghazali said, I think the highest level or the highest method of knowledge is Basira. The highest level of uh, method of knowledge is Basira. By getting into the Basira, he can reach deep truths about the reality of all things. So please have trust to our awliya. Okay? When you read, you have to have trust towards them. Okay? Because he can reach deep truths. Ma kazabal fu'adu ma ro'a. Because what they can see is not just through the reason, but through the fu'ad. In its interaction with the qal. They can see that. They can feel that. So that's why the knowledge that can, they attain and we, when they explain that to us is a kind of zawqiyah kind of knowledge. The experiential knowledge out of the basira 
out of their being intimacy with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That kind of knowledge. So, so that's why Al Quran emphasizes that ma kazabal fuadu maroa. They never lies. Yeah, they never lie. Yeah. When it comes to the truth, when it comes to talk about the reality of all things. So that's why, because uh, it involves, when they explain something, it involves something like the, the experience, the zawqiyah, the shuhud also, the kind of very specific kind of vision, which, which we, I think, Sometimes, even until we die, we are not possible to get that. <laughs> the, the kind of vision that we call shuhud. So that's why this morning I mentioned that uh, this is a part uh, among what we call the shuhada. Okay? The shuhada is not just the one who died in, uh, in the battle or in the war to fight against the, 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 the kuffar, or the one who died abroad uh, by, uh, uh, when they they doing the da'wah. They, uh, they die abroad like somebody died in China uh, in the midst of their doing da'wah. The shuhada also include the, uh, a person who can get into a vision regarding the reality of something. They are also the shuhada. They are also can, uh, can have a vision to, to see clearly the falsehood that happened in our time, at our time. Like Prophet al he can see all kinds of falsehood and error that succumb and infuse our mind. Okay? Uh, that kind of thing. They can get into that kind of vision. And those people are also the shuhada. And they are the highest kind of the shuhada. Okay? Because they can enlighten us. They can remind us. They can guide us. Okay? Not to be trapped by any kind of falsehood. Not uh, to be uh, led by any kind of confusion and that kind of thing. So, uh, when we see their writing, when we see their writing, it is not any more factual. Don't you perceive that what they have written is something just a fact? It is not any more fact. It is an expression of their spiritual experience. It is an expression of their vision, what they saw through their cult. Okay? Uh, that is their ex expression. And it is actually an expression regarding <coughs> themselves. So that's why I think we have to really prepare ourselves in order to understand their work. Because it is an expression of their, their fana experience. Let's say when, uh, when like Abu Karim Jili, Insan Kamel, when he wrote Insan Kamel, it is out of, of his fana experience. The second separation, okay, his fana experience. And then he, uh, because he used to complete the fana, and it is a real kind of fana experience, he can get a knowledge out of that experience and that knowledge is the one that he, he put that in a written form. So when you read that, it is not just a normal fact like you read all kind of sociological book, like the economic book, or the book written by, by uh, the management guru, let's say. <laughs> Peter Drucker. It is not like that. <laughs> it is not like, they are not like Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker is a real Drucker, you know. <laughs> they are not like, like them, you know. So, when we read their work, when we read Alatasa's works, it should involve our right spiritual feeling. You have to train yourself in order to attain a right spiritual feeling. Because what is there in his writing is about their zaw, their experience of truth. <coughs> their experience of truth. So you have to involve your the spiritual feeling when it comes to read their work and when it comes to try to understand their work. That must be the first thing that you have to have. Okay? The right spiritual feeling. 
Don't read their work just like you read newspaper. When you read something like an ST, the star, something like when you have a drink, coffee, just something like I want to browse, yeah, something. You don't, you don't, uh, don't treat their work like that, you know. So you have to have a right spiritual feeling. And then the second one, you have also to have the right psychological state. You have to train yourself at least to come to a certain level of spiritual state, at least to the level of sabar, or at least to the level of siddiq. Siddiq is very higher. The most highest level is siddiq. I think some of, some of us are not quite possible to reach that state. <laughs> not quite possible. But at least you come to the state like, like sabar, taqwa, tawakal, ikhlas. Uh, ikhlas, I think, also very difficult. Uh, very difficult. But try the best in order to, to at least attain one of those psychological states. Okay. Once you uh, uh, attain that, you at least can understand some of our, uh, some of our awliya works. Okay? especially the work of Professor Al-Artas. Because why? Because their work contain insights. And what I just mentioning, uh, it contains all kinds of spiritual experience. So that's why we have to be careful. Okay? Uh, we, we cannot deal with their work as though we are studying a simple book. Okay? That is not a simple book. Okay, uh, everything relate with Al Quran. Everything relate with the prophetic tradition. So that's why uh, Prophet Al Atas also advise us when we want to read and understand his book. He said that you have to be honest. You have to be honest. Okay, and then how? To how, what is the indicator that we are honest when we are reading his book? Because honest is something internal, you know. So uh, we cannot know whether somebody is honest or not when they read Professor Al Antas' work, you know. We don't know that. But there is an indicator. Okay? The indicator is that somebody knows his capacity. It means that he don't force himself when he read Professor Alata's work. Okay? He, they don't even force themselves because they know their capacity. Okay? They don't force themselves. Because once you force yourself, once you don't know your capacity, all of his idea become false to you. So you have to be very, very careful. Not just his work, you know. The work of all of our awliya. You have to know your capacity. Don't push. Don't force. You, know? you have to have time. Patient. Be patient. Even it will take about 10 years. I'll take about 10, 15 years in order to understand his work. You know? Not just one day. Not just after the launching. People after the launching say, that, oh, I'm finished reading Alata's book. Wow, amazing. No? <laughs> you are more than Alata's. Even Alata's take about six years to complete his work. But you can just complete the reading of this six years to work just one day. Amazing, you know. <laughs> it is amazing, real amazing. Uh, that shows that they don't know their place. Going back to what I mentioned just now, they don't know their place. So that's why you have that the that a right true indication of you being honest or not to the works of our Aulia. To be honest, you have to know your capacity. You have to know where to stop or when to stop. Okay? When you read the book like Prolegumina, you read the first chapter, second chapter, and come to the third chapter. What is the ch third chapter? Anybody can? <laughs> uh, this is a test. Uh, if you fail the test, you can go back now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Islam and the sort of, yeah. 
Excellent. So let's say after you come to the chapter Islam, you find some difficulties to understand something, especially when he start to uh, mention about the reality of truth or something in there. So about the, the uh, nature of existence, you know. So please stop. Don't force yourself. And start to read again the, 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 the introduction. Even I, I uh, remind uh, our friends before, don't start even with introduction. Start with preface. You have to read the preface. The preface is something like a map or something like an atlas given by al atas to us in order at least to see, not just overview all the essential element that he'll trying to expose to us in his work, to the preface. So don't skip the preface. Okay. The preface is very, very meaningful and beneficial when we want to start reading his work. So I even ask them, okay, our friends, yeah, please start with preface. So uh, he, he even read that preface in front of me. He already become like, like in, in, my, in a Perak language, they call it tumpo, no? <laughs> Just one phrase becomes something like tumpo, no? <laughs> like, 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 what is the English word for tumpo? Khalas, <laughs> in, in Arabic, something like become khalas, no? You do, you, meaning that you, you cannot, you know, uh, you cannot continue. You, you are really cannot continue, even on the introduction, you know, uh, because you not really understand. Even the first, the first praise uh, of his preface, you know. So, so that's why uh, any of his word, his phrase, even when you read Al-Ghazali also, that's why I always mention to people that uh, if you find a sheet of paper on the road, let's say, for example, without the name, without the author, you know this is Al-Ghazali's writing. Because it's very peculiar. You know this is al writing. When the name of al is not there, but you know this is al writing. The same thing also when you uh, find something like a piece of paper with the Arabic, uh, Arabic uh, like phrase uh, inside there. We know that it's, this is the Hadith, not Al-Quran, not the Quranic verse. We have, I think we have, I think, uh, something like a sense. Right? Come to a certain level, we can have something like a sense. And because why? Because like Al-Ghazali, Jalalun Rumi, Abdul Rahim Jami, uh, Al-Qushairi, Hujwiri, uh, the, the, their expression is their self. Okay? Themselves is actually knowledge. Themselves is actually the truth that they express in their work. Okay? Let's say when I mentioned about al when we read his book, Prolegomena, to the, metaf to the Metaphysics of Islam, he is the Prolegomena. Okay? The book is something like uh, about himself, just to record about himself, his experience. The knowledge about, about what, what is con uh, contained uh, in the book Prolegomena to the Metaf Metaphysics of Islam is actually himself. When he wrote something like historical fact and fiction, he is the history. Not just historian, he is the history. He is the knowledge about history. He is the truth about history. He is not just communicating or writing something about about certain subject matter, but he is, he himself is that subject matter. He, him, he himself is that discipline. Okay, when he write about like, uh, like uh, what, philosophy of science, he himself is that philosophy. <laughs> That's why it's become very clear to us. If you have a sound mind, because some people they they know have quite a sound mind. You have to have a sound mind, okay? Not just sound. 
Okay? Without the mind and not just mind without the sound. <laughs> so, uh, so we have to know when to stop and where to stop. Okay? Okay? Rest for a while. What we mean by rest for a while, wait until another three years start again. <laughs> after you contemplate, after you reflect, you know? That not just, just, just something rest, you know? You have to reflect first, contemplate again what, uh, what the things that you already read, and, and then contemplate, reflect, and after two or three years start again, and find another energy, okay? Uh, you already know, uh, uh, you already, I think your, your capacity already elevate to another level. Uh, everybody know that, okay? Everybody can know about uh, what level they are, actually. So, if you don't do that, like I mentioned just now, all of what he trying to say to us become false to you, and uh, it will bring to all kind of doubts. So that's why people, when, let's say just for a simple example, when they attend Saturday night lecture, they already have their worldview. Okay. They do not really listen to Professor Atas. Okay. They don't really, they don't really participate in his thinking. Okay. Because they already something in their mind. So when they ask question, they not really asking question. They want to impress what they have in their mind. Okay? Not, some, not about Al-Atas. What they say is about themselves, not Al-Atas idea. Before, from 1993, when uh, we have Saturday, a series of Saturday night lectures at ISTA, you know, we can see all kinds of people around 1996, when the Saturday night lecture uh, be, uh, already uh, become like a public lecture. People, uh, people came to the lecture, all kind of people, the government officers, politicians, individuals, NGOs, and they carry the green book together with them. The green book is Prolgamina. <laughs> uh, so they are like the, the I think like, the, uh, like um, what do you say, like Carl Dye. Yeah. <laughs> like the Carl Dye who carry the book, but they don't really understand, okay? Uh, that, that uh, what they are, actually. So that's why when uh, you are not honest, when you don't know your capacity, so it will bring more doubt. Let's say uh, being honest is very important. If you're not honest in doing your submission, that also going to lead you to all kind of, not just doubt, all kind of... Uh, Corruption as you got to your self. It will corrupt yourself. If you are not honest in doing your submission to Allah SWT. Let's say when you do your salat and you do the sawm, when you help the people, when you give sadaqah, if you are not really honest, it's going to spoil your inner self. Okay? It's going to corrupt yourself more than uh, from the other way. Sometimes the corruption can happen uh, by another way of doing. But when we're doing something right, but not with honesty and not with sincerity, it will corrupt yourself. So we have to be careful, especially when you want to, to involve in seeking the truth. You have to be honest. You have to be sincere and you have to be, to be truthful to yourself, Siddiq. So that, that's why I think in one of the writing I forget about the writer, Kitab Usik, Kitab Usik, uh, he mentioned about three things that make up what we call the integrity in Islam. Okay? The Siddiq, truthfulness, uh, sincerity, ikhlas, and passion, sabar. We cannot lack one of it. If you, do, you, if you have sabar, but you are not truthful to yourself, that is also going to spoil you. So you have to have all those three at once. C cannot lack one of it. Otherwise, it doesn't make something like integrity in you. So that is a real integrity. 
not something like uh, what being propagated by the Institute of Integrity of Malaysia. <laughs> yeah? And they have to improve, they have to examine again the interpretation and the definition about integrity, you know. It's not to condemn them, but to correct them, you know. Yeah. So don't put us in jail, you know, because of this kind of remark. <laughs> yeah, really mean good to them, you know. So, so that's why uh, his work, uh, Professor Atas's work especially, uh, provide us with the opportunity to accommodate the right true conception of all important aspects of life. Let's say when we want to understand the real true nature of politics, what is meant by politics? Siasa in Islam. So you can just refer to his work and find some essential element that can be used in order for you to, con to construct or to formulate the conception of politics in Islam. The same thing also when we talk about economy. Okay? Our people now, they don't look at Professor al Atas when they come to talk about the conception of economic in Islam. Try to see, try to refer to all of his work and find out some of the essential elements contained in his work and bring that forward in order to be used in, uh, in formulating the conception of economic in Islam. You can do that. I bet you, you can do that. That also depends whether you are sincere or not. Some of our professors, academicians, they are not really sincere, you know. They think they are the greatest, you know. They are superior. Professor al Atas is nothing. He doesn't know about economy. But he is the one who, who advised IPFIM, one of the institutes under the central bank, about what book they should have on economy. So if you want to have some idea about Al Atas economic thinking, you can see all kind of book that he selected for IPFIM. So you can touch to, to study about Al Atas's concept, uh, uh, idea regarding economy from the book that he selected for IPFIM. Simple thing. It means that he know about economy. <laughs> You are concerned about economy, even uh, if ISTA is not being used up by some entity. I don't want to mention what that kind of entity. Okay. And there is no plotting in order to um, bring uh, down the ISTA by some people. Okay. Alatas already has in his mind that he's going to make that all is stuck as a center for economic studies. Don't play a fool with him. Because we have the new one. So the old one will going to be the center for economic studies. How great it is when this economic studies supervised by Professor Alatas. <laughs> Professor Alatas. But, but we, we think that, yeah. How he know about it? He don't know really about economic. Yeah. He don't know about politics. He don't know about everything. What he know is about something out uh, on the air, something up in the air, you know, like metaphysics, something. <laughs> so um, that means we are so arrogant, you know, we don't know our place. Okay? Back again to about knowing your own place. Yeah. So if you uh, don't, I cannot see the benefit of his work. So we miss the opportunity. We miss the opportunity, uh, which is, he is the one who provides some essential element that we can benefit in order to formulate, to construct something, okay? So, uh, based on his work, we can also define something in a more wider, comprehensive sense, okay? Let's say, like, when we want to talk about the conception of leadership in Islam, look at his work. Look on his uh, exposition on adab. From adab itself, you can develop the com more comprehensive uh, conception of leadership in Islam from his 
exposition on adab because there are so many things uh, when he talked about adab. Adab relate with justice, with wisdom, with the self, everything, you know. Everything which is so essential compared with the present conception of leadership done by sapa-sapa je lah. And, uh, which is like a rubbish, you know. Or something like a trash, you know. So don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Start to listen to al -Atas. See what the things that he, pro he, he the opportunity that he provides to us in his writing. If you want to, to construct something, please refer to his book. Okay? And if you don't want to uh, refer to his book, so refer to, to any great writings uh, within his line. What, who, who are the people within his line? Junaid. If you will be able to read Junaid, you just read. al Atas make you easy to, to understand those people. Don't feel that you are uh, clever enough by not want to read al Atas, but want to read Junaid al-Baghdadi. <laughs> al Atas show you the way guide you how to understand them, how to understand Rumi, how to understand Ibn Arabi. Don't start to, to, don't start to neglect his work and straight away going to Ibn Arabi. I want to read Ibn Arabi. I want to write a thesis about Ibn Arabi. If you want to, uh, people ask why. Because you feel that uh, malu, you know, to write something about al Atash, you know. <laughs> um, because something like very, very like prestige, you know, when somebody said that I'm, my thesis is about Ibn Arabi, my thesis is about Karim Jili, <laughs> but we said my thesis is about, uh, very slow, about Professor Alatas. <laughs> you don't have to be like, like uh, embarrassed by doing something about Professor Alatas. We have to start doing now. All the thesis have to concentrate on his idea. And because his idea is very much significant in our period now. Because our confrontation is with the secular worldview, secularization as the philosophical program. The most significant scholar in that context is Professor Alatas. The, the confrontation with the positivists who have their own conception of reality. So who else that you think can, can attack them, can confront them? Professor Alatas, his book on quiddity and essence is something like an attack or rebuttal towards the positive view on the nature of reality. That is the book, <laughs> the, the, the quality and essence. So that's why he, Allah, something like give us a ni'mah. This is ni'mah. Um, what is the ayat about? Fabi ni'mati rabbika fahadis. If there is a ni'mah given to you, say that always. The ni'mah is the knowledge that Allah endows to, 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 to uh, Professor Al Atas. Please always say his idea. Okay? Propagate his idea. Disseminate his idea within our society. Okay? Okay? Uh, because it's something like relate to that ayat. Fabi ni'mati rab. Bika fahadith. If it is a ni'mah, always say that. Always mention that. Always acknowledge that. That is the ayah, you know. So now, we don't really appreciate the ni'mah. You don't really appreciate the ni'mah. Okay? Some, sometimes people don't want to refer. The, some of you see, they even not allow the student to use his book. Okay? They attack his idea, you know. So meaning that you are really cool for ni'mah. Yeah? So we have to be careful in this kind of thing. So that's why... Uh, I mentioned just now because uh, his idea is very comprehensive, full of insight and full of cognitive content. 
So we can having so a lot of benefit out of his work. And then at the same time also, he provide us with profound and refined conceptual framework that can accommodate the most widest possible context, whatever context, about art, about literature, about music, anything, okay, about philosophy, the most wider possible context. So he provide us with a most refined, comprehensive conceptual framework. Okay, conceptual framework. So please identify and acknowledge that conceptual framework. If you don't know what is the conceptual framework of Atas, please come to my class every Wednesday at CASIS, the world view of Islam, development, and culture. So I talk about the Al Atas conceptual framework for development and culture. That is one of the example. But you already my eight, uh, already missed my eight classes, so please don't come. <laughs> come to our next class when we start again. That kind of lecture, you know. So, so uh, why we we say that it is a refined kind of conceptual framework. Because his work contain a coherent system, okay, a coherent system which are resilient to major challenges, whether it is internal or external challenges by caused by our people, our Muslim, okay, because there are three types of Muslim, uh, the, uh, the extremists among the Muslim. I'm a Muslim, and then the Muslim who stole other ideas, who steal other ideas, and they formulate that ideas within their framework, intihal al muptilin and then there is uh, other Muslim also, the juhala, okay, the ignorance. There are so many ignorance among Muslim now, but unfortunately they are the one who start to interpret religion. They are the one who involved in education. They are the one who involved in making educational policy. This ignorant. Okay, so you have to be very careful. And in order to uh, not uh, not to be trapped or to solve that kind of problem, we have to have Alatas's framework because his framework is having some kind of coherent system which are so resilient to all kinds of challenges, whether internal and external, we already understood, okay? We already understood the external one about secularization as the philosophical program. That is the external one. Even the external one cannot simply uh, influence us if we don't have the internal one. If the internal one become like more intense in terms of this problem, it can, it can uh, the external uh, element can easily uh, infuse, being infused in the mind of the Muslim. So we have to be very careful on this kind of thing. And then at the same time also, obviously his idea, his system can withstand the challenges of secularization, okay? And then the most interesting thing that I think some people need to know, all of his work uh, exists in conformity with each other. Okay? So you cannot just say, I, I, I want just to want to read Quiddity Nelson, or I just want to read uh, Covenant Fulfill. I don't want to read other books. Yeah. You have to know that all of his book exists in conformity. Each of his book conform to each other. So we cannot miss, we have to read all of his book. Even when he write about the Malay world, you also have to read that together with like the philosophy of science about secularization because the case is the Islamization of the Malay world. Okay, How uh, in the Malay world they can easily liberate themselves from all kind of mythological, magical aspect and the cultural aspect which contradict with Islam. That is the case study for 
Islamization. But the whole thing about Islamization, at another book, talk about talk uh, being being explained in the context of secularization. But at least we can see the case of Islamization in what expect that our Muslim here, the great Muslim here, who bring who brought Islam uh, uh, over this part of the world, can make our people liberate themselves from those kind of things which oppose to the to which oppose to Islam. Okay? That's a very, very good study, yeah? good case study. So that we have even we have to read together. We read together. So like when we want to understand about, about uh, his discourse, covenant fulfilled, you can listen to him, okay? So there's going to be a third lecture of him later, inshallah. You can listen to him, but you're not going to understand him unless you read other books, like The Nature of Man, about Islam as a foundation of morality, and then about the, the on justice and the nature of man, and quiddity and essence, and then you can understand. This, uh, this is something like the, his writing uh, at the pinnacle of his intellectual, spiritual journey. Uh, this fulfillment, uh, the covenant fulfillment. So it cannot be compared with other books. But in order to understand that, we have to read other books, leading you to understand his discourse. Okay? His discourse. So at his age, of course, when he come up, came up with that kind of discourse, it shows a certain, a very high level of spiritual and intellectual maturity, you know. So it is not just any kind of like philosophical assumption. It's not any more assumption. It's not any more idea. It's more transcend idea, transcend reason. Okay? So each of his works provides certain criteria which is necessary for a proper understanding of another work. So you have to know that when you, when you read like the philosophy of education in Islam. What are the books that you need to read? Another book that you need to read is Happiness, Nature of Man, about religion of Islam. <laughs> so many books in order just to understand about the philosophy of education in Islam. So about education in, because education in Islam uh, relate with man, relate with wisdom, relate with justice, with so many things, you know. So you have to read other books in order to understand just that thin, small book, the philosophy of education in Islam. So because uh, each of his book provides a criteria, each one of them having their own criteria providing for, for us to, uh, to have a better understanding on the other book. Okay? So as if each one of them constitute the intellectual background and a proper context of respective main concern of another work. So that's why I always remind, um, uh, I think uh, the, not just the student participant, if they want to talk about something, they have to train themselves to have a proper background. Start with a proper background, proper context. Okay, if you want to talk about ethics, what is the background for ethics? Okay. What is the background for ethics? The background for ethics is the Western secular value system, which is explained by Professor al -Attaf in his book, Islam and Secularism. And that is the background. So please take that background from Alatas's idea in some of his book. Okay, let's say you want to talk about something else, about freedom. You have to have a proper background before you talk about freedom. What is the contextual dimension for freedom? Because when you have a context, when you have a background, and after that you talk about the freedom in Islam, it'll, it will bring solution to the current problem regarding the conception and understanding of freedom. Okay? As well as you always succumb by the, the, the conception of, modern conception of wisdom. Okay? 
which become a part of pluralism. Okay, a part of pluralism. So we we can free to change our religion because all religion are the same. That kind of thing going to be happen. Even it's already happened. Okay, it's already because we think that we are free. Okay, we are free like the West. We can free ourselves from God because we already matured. What we what make us matured? They say they, they they said that we already have science. We develop science. From science we can know everything. Science can make us discover so many things. So now we don't need God. <laughs> we don't need God. So this is what Al Atas mentioned in his book. Yeah, this. So you have to understand about, about this kind of thing. Okay? Uh, because, because, you know, um, some of his work contain implicit expression that can be benefited in order to understand his other work. Because sometimes people cannot trace that implicit content in his work. That's why when, let's say, for example, uh, in late 90s, uh, throughout 1990s, uh, going back to this Saturday Night Lecture series, okay? Some people, they said they don't want to come anymore because uh, Alatas keep on repeating things. <laughs> so I mentioned to him, it's our azan, it's being repeated five days a time, uh, five times a day. <laughs> the same thing. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu Allah, Allah. <laughs> the same thing. Five times a day, continuously, the same thing. But you still don't understand <laughs> what is al falah uh, what is what, uh, when, when, like the TV, when they have to want to have a background, like a uh, picture of this al falah Hanya al falah they come up with this twin tower, meaning that they don't understand. <laughs> they don't really understand this al falah yeah. Even though it is being repeated five times a day. So what's wrong with Alatas repeating thing? Yeah. Because you know, uh, this is something like the, the works of our Aulia is something like a cutting edge. So it provides us with a, with a big wide spectrum, you know? with a wide dimension, big dimension. So it based on your intellectual capability and your spiritual maturity. It might be uh, this year, your spiritual capacity is at this stage. So we, when you attend his lecture, you can at least understand something, but the fact that you don't understand so many things, <laughs> because there are so many implicit things in his talk, yeah, so many. Even he repeat that. But if you are mature enough, at least when you come to this level, you start to see, wow, this is the one I'm looking, uh, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward before the answer. Let's say, for example, even though it is the same thing, he mentioned the same thing. <laughs> but you come to to something spark in your mind, yeah, giving a solution to you. Because you already come to a certain higher level compared with uh, compare uh, with what you was before, okay. Uh, that is, I think, uh, the fact yeah, about his idea. So you have to to, although it is being repeated, but it is very very meaningful. You know, you have to always like when you read Al Quran, you read the same thing. You read the same thing. The whole life, you read Qul Wallahu Ahad until you die. Somebody, uh, I think some of you even don't understand what is Qul Wallahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. They are not really uh, having a deeper understanding. Even though they work uh, as a KSU of ministry, even they are prime ministers, okay? they don't understand. <laughs> Can they read that every day? Yeah. And then sometimes they read for the utilitarian kind of thing, for a certain purpose, very much utilitarian. <laughs> so this kind of insolent towards Al-Quran, you know. And they studied Al-Quran in a piecemeal manner, for the sake of, just for the sake of something. I always uh, mention this example. 
Uh, people always call me when they, they when somebody finish uh, uh, writing the speech to one of the politician, and that politician call me because you know that I know about religion, you know. So please, please uh, find me uh, any verse that can fit. So I said to him, I don't have a time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have been uh, I have been expelled expelled from the government. <laughs> they don't like people like us, you know. They are the one who become an insolent, rude uh, towards Al Quran. So you cannot uh, uh, serve uh, serve them. Okay. So Alhamdulillah, we are not part of them now. Okay. And then. Uh, His work also having the elements of certainty which not going to lead us to confusion. Why? I always have the, uh, the question why? Because for you to think. Because I said just now that his work having the elements of certainty. And if he read read his work properly, it doesn't lead us towards confusion, towards doubt. <coughs> Why? Because his ideas always compatible and conform with the standard of truth and with what is meant by good in Sharia. That what it is. Okay? That about the answer, the why. Because of that, his idea, even the idea of our 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 another awliya in the past also, their ideas are universal, kulli. The idea are kulli. That's why Professor Altas also, he's the kulli kind of scholar. Okay, the universe, he is the universal scholar. Okay, because uh, um, what contained in his idea is a real, true meaning which fit the principle of wisdom and justice. That what make his idea coolly, and what make himself coolly, okay, coolly, because he need to to uh, that continue what Rasulullah did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did uh, convey Islam, which is the universal religion, and he himself is the universal prophet. So we need another. We need uh, in any period, the universal scholar. The scholar that can understand so many important, crucial, essential things. Not, not just fiqih, not just kalam, but so many things. History, language, philosophy, okay, science, kalam, okay, metaphysics, so many things. So, so this is what make the 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 integrity of knowledge, okay? Because they are coolly in terms of their outlook, their the intellectual capability. So by looking at all of his work, we can understand that the knowledge that he attained is based on direct intuitive experience and vision. That's why I call it just now shuhud. Based on, we can see clearly, Al-Ghazali, Professor Latas, Rumi, and they, they already attain that kind of knowledge at that level. So by having this kind of experience and vision, although he uses reason, but he assigned to his reason a proper place. He used his reason. He always say that I use uh, uh, my my argument is very much logical. Meaning that he used his reason. He assigned, but he assigned to his reason a proper place and restrained his reason from overstepping its domain. So we have to to follow that kind of discipline, you know. When we use our reason, we have to know how to restrain our reason not to overstep the limit. Okay, not to overstep the limit. Because reason has a certain specific domain. We cannot over, over, overstep 
uh, goes beyond that domain. Because when we start to go beyond that domain, it is already falsehood. So that's why the reason cannot construct the conception of, let's say, God. The conception of knowledge. Because Almu is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of his sifat. We cannot define the sifat. We cannot give limit to the to the names of God. It means that we cannot define knowledge. We can just elaborate it, but we cannot define it. And because of that, the reason cannot simply meddle with it. It cannot say that I can use my reason in order to construct the conception of knowledge. So it is really falsehood because most of the major terms and major concept in Islam are metaphysical terms and concept. Let's say, for example, happiness. For, for our people now, it is something like a normal word. But happiness, the sa'ada, is actually the metaphysical term. So because of sa'ada is the metaphysical term, you cannot involve your reason to construct the conception of happiness in Islam. Okay? So you have to have another method, the, 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 the intuitive experience, the inner intuitive experience, the kashaf, the shuhud, okay? all kind of thing that involve in that method. Okay? And the laduni expect, okay? that, that kind of thing, the inspiration, uh, that can help you in order to see what is this happiness. Okay? Uh, the conception itself is already established through Al-Quran. But you just use your reason to elaborate that. Professor Atas used that kind of method, use that kind of way. He did not meddle with what Al-Quran already established. Because Al-Quran already established what is ada in Islam, in Al-Quran, in, in the Hadith also. So like the, the same thing like freedom. Freedom is also the metaphysical term. So we cannot just uh, conceptualize freedom as what we want because those kind of terms are the metaphysical terms. Okay? So that's why we have to be guided and to know, not to overstep the limit of our reason. So it shows that like Professor al -Atas. and by looking at his work, he is actually, by looking at his work, we can understand him. In what way? He, he, he himself is preeminently a man of reason. Okay. Preeminently a man of reason. He admits the authority of reason. He admits that always. When he writes something, he, he, he I use my reason. But at the same time, he attains something which reason cannot grasp it. Reason cannot grasp by its own power. Okay? He can attain something uh, beyond the, the, uh, the domain of reason. Okay? It shows that he has a wider field at his command. Lies beyond the reach of reason. So that's why uh, he can, can, can discover so many things. Okay? So many things. He can even, even know about somebody who uh, did a fundamental mistake as regard to like Islam, Al-Quran, about the Prophet, you know. So because uh, he has a wider field at his command, which, which is beyond the, the domain of reason. So that's why when we examine his work, we can come to know that he is a scholar of universal vision. He's a scholar of universal vision. Shahada al-Kul in Arabic. Shahada al-Kul. A scholar of a universal vision. 
because this kind of scholar who are uh, being mentioned in the hadith warasatul anbiya this is the warasatul anbiya if we people ask who the ulama this is the ulama the one who have the shahada al kul we have a universal vision what is this universal vision the universal vision is something that can provide us with praiseworthy notion and true testimony. And that is the Shahada al kul Everything is about their true testimony about the Prophet, about God, about themselves, about the whole world. Okay? This is a kind of person that Allah commands us to associate with. Okay? What is the, 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 the ayah? That command us to always associate ourselves with those people. If we find them, please make yourself near or intimate with them, close to them. What is the ayah? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'al sadiqin. Ya, wa kunu ma'al sadiqin. So, be among the truthful one. So be among the truthful one is actually an indicator that you have the highest level of Iman. Yeah? The highest level of Taqwa. Because the ayat come Amanu and then the Taqwa. So what about the, the, the one who always like to associate themselves with politician? That's only a hypothetical question. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Okay? So that's why uh, before we, it's already 10 30. So uh, before we close our session, uh, I just want to mention something about Al Atas, uh, another thing about his, his, uh, his work. And Al Atas, uh, when you see Al Atas' work, it's really he provides us with a body of thought. And his body of thought is thoroughly rooted in the Sufi metaphysical framework. That's why he himself liked to be known as Sufi metaphysician. Okay? Because all of his work rooted deeply and thoroughly in the Sufi metaphysical framework. So that's why when we get benefit from his work, we can possibly attain higher degree of intelligibility and we are not going to suffer from all kind of confusion uh, that, that that is a conclusion for tonight session i have so many things to to be mentioned here but i think it is already enough it's already enough and start read again if you already read his work some of you read again read again and read again uh, because because uh, if you find that uh, your understanding is still not related coherently with other, other discipline, meaning that you are still fail in order to read his book properly. Because all of his work relate co coherently with so many major disciplines like theology, cosmology, metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, history, psychology. So any of, not just the work, the phrase contained in his work, even sometimes only one phrase connect with cosmology, ontology. You just mentioned to me the example I can mention to you. I can analyze to you. This is something, this one phrase relate at once with cosmology, ontology, psychology, theology, everything. You know? That is amazing about the works of Professor Al-Tas and also the same, I think the same nature happened to our ulama before. But when it comes to Professor Al-Tas, his great contribution is in the context of confronting the Western secular worldview, which is global, not like before. Before, like Al-Ghazali and the ulama of the past, it is only meant for a certain group and uh, only meant for a certain, certain region, certain part of the world. 
But this secularization as the philosophical program, program is something global. It keep on infusing to, to, to every mind, okay? every people's mind. So it is something global. So this person, Said Muhammad Naqil, and Prophet Said Muhammad Naqil, he's, confront, he's confronting that. He's doing his, uh, the, he, uh, he, he bring forward his idea in order to, to attack those kind of things, to make us liberate, can liberate ourselves from those kind of things. Because I said to you before, this secularization as the philosophical problem is behind you, in front of you, on the left of you, in the right, at the right, everywhere. As if you cannot escape from it. But this person come and show you the way of how to escape and liberate yourself from this kind of element. So please acknowledge him properly. Please thank him. Please recognize him. Okay? Please respect him. Wa billahi taufiq wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.